A free electron laser is a kind of laser whose Lussing medium consists of very high-speed electrons moving freely through a magnetic structure, hence the term free electron. The free electron laser is tunable and has the widest frequency range of any laser type, currently ranging in wavelength from microwaves, through terahertz radiation and infrared, to the visible spectrum, ultraviolet, and X-ray. The free electron laser was invented by John Mady in 1971 at Stanford University. The free electron laser utilizes technology developed by Hans Motz and his co-workers, who built an undulator at Stanford in 1953, using the Wiggler magnetic configuration which is one component of a free electron laser. Mady used a 43 MeV electron beam and 5 m long Wiggler to amplify a signal. <laughs> beam creation To create a fell, a beam of electrons is accelerated to almost the speed of light. The beam passes through a periodic arrangement of magnets with alternating poles across the beam path, which creates a side-to-side -side magnetic field. The direction of the beam is called the longitudinal direction, while the direction across the beam path is called transverse. This array of magnets is called an undulator or a wiggler, because due to the Lorentz force of the field it forces the electrons in the beam to wiggle transversely, traveling along a sinusoidal path about the axis of the undulator. The transverse acceleration of the electrons across this path results in the release of photons synchrotron radiation, which are monochromatic but still incoherent. Because the electromagnetic waves from randomly distributed electrons interfere constructively and destructively in time. The resulting radiation power scales linearly with the number of electrons. Mirrors at each end of the undulator create an optical cavity, causing the radiation to form standing waves, or alternately an external excitation laser is provided. The synchrotron radiation becomes sufficiently strong that the transverse electric field of the radiation beam interacts with the transverse electron current created by the sinusoidal wiggling motion, causing some electrons to gain and others to lose energy to the optical field via the ponderomotive force. This energy modulation evolves into electron density current modulations with a period of one optical wavelength. The electrons are thus longitudinally clumped into microbunches, separated by one optical wavelength along the axis. Whereas an undulator alone would cause the electrons to radiate independently incoherently, the radiation emitted by the bunched electrons is in phase, and the fields add together coherently. The radiation intensity grows, causing additional microbunching of the electrons, which continue to radiate in phase with each other. This process continues until the electrons are completely microbunched and the radiation reaches a saturated power several orders of magnitude higher than that of the undulator radiation. The wavelength of the radiation emitted can be readily tuned by adjusting the energy of the electron beam or the magnetic field strength of the undulators. Fells are relativistic machines. The wavelength of the emitted radiation lambda r Display style lambda underscore r is given by lambda r equals lambda u two gamma two one plus k two two Display style lambda underscore r equals frac lambda underscore u two gamma carrot two left one plus frac k carrot two two right. Or when the Wiggler strength parameter k, discussed below, is small. Lambda r lambda u two gamma two. Display style lambda underscore r propto frac lambda underscore u two gamma carrot two, where lambda u display style lambda underscore u is the undulator wavelength, the spatial period of the magnetic field gamma display style gamma is the relativistic Lorentz factor and the proportionality constant depends on the undulator geometry and is of the order of 1. This formula can be understood as a combination of two relativistic effects. Imagine you are sitting on an electron passing through the undulator. Due to Lorentz contraction the undulator is shortened by a gamma 
Factor and the electron experiences much shorter undulator wavelength. Lambda U gamma display style lambda underscore U gamma. However, the radiation emitted at this wavelength is observed in the laboratory frame of reference, and the relativistic Doppler effect brings the second gamma display style gamma factor to the above formula. Rigorous derivation from Maxwell's equations gives the divisor of 2 and the proportionality constant. In an X-ray fell the typical undulator wavelength of 1 cm is transformed to X-ray wavelengths on the order of 1 nm by gamma display style gamma approximately equals 2000 i.e. the electrons have to travel with the speed of 0.9999998c. Topic. Wiggler strength parameter k k, a dimensionless parameter, tells the Wiggler strength as the relationship between the length of a period and the radius of bend k equals gamma lambda u 2 pi rho equals e b Zero lambda u two pi m e c display style k equals frac gamma lambda underscore u two pi rho equals frac e b underscore zero lambda underscore u two pi m underscore e c where rho display style rho is the bending radius b 0 display style b underscore 0 is the applied magnetic field m e display style m underscore e is the electron mass and e display style e is the elementary charge expressed in practical units the dimensionless undulator parameter is k equals 0 0.934 b 0 t lambda u cm display style k equals 0 0.934 cdot b underscore 0 text t cdot lambda underscore u text cm topic Quantum effects In most cases, the theory of classical electromagnetism adequately accounts for the behavior of free electron lasers. For sufficiently short wavelengths, quantum effects of electron recoil and shot noise may have to be considered. <laughs> Large facilities required Free electron lasers require the use of an electron accelerator with its associated shielding, as accelerated electrons can be a radiation hazard if not properly contained. These accelerators are typically powered by klystrons, which require a high voltage supply. The electron beam must be maintained in a vacuum, which requires the use of numerous vacuum pumps along the beam path. While this equipment is bulky and expensive, free electron lasers can achieve very high peak powers, and the tunability of FELs makes them highly desirable in many disciplines, including chemistry, structure determination of molecules in biology, medical diagnosis, and nondestructive testing. <laughs> X-ray laser without mirrors The lack of a material to make mirrors that can reflect extreme ultraviolet and X-rays means that FELs at these frequencies cannot use a resonant cavity like other lasers, which reflects the radiation so it makes multiple passes through the undulator. Consequently, in an X-ray FEL XFEL, the output beam is produced by a single pass of radiation through the undulator, there must be enough amplification over a single pass to produce an adequately bright beam. X-ray free electron lasers use long undulators. The underlying principle of the intense pulses from the X-ray laser lies in the principle of self-amplified spontaneous emission which leads to the microbunching. 
Initially all electrons are distributed evenly and they emit incoherent spontaneous radiation only. Through the interaction of this radiation and the electron's oscillations, they drift into microbunches separated by a distance equal to one radiation wavelength. Through this interaction, all electrons begin emitting coherent radiation in phase. All emitted radiation can reinforce itself perfectly whereby wave crests and wave troughs are always superimposed on one another in the best possible way. This results in an exponential increase of emitted radiation power, leading to high beam intensities and laser-like properties. Examples of facilities operating on the SASE-FEL principle include the Free Electron Laser in Hamburg flash, the Linach Coherent Light Source LCLS at the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory, the European X-ray Free Electron Laser in Hamburg, the Spring 8 Compact SASE Source SCSS, the SwissFEL at the Paul Scherer Institute Switzerland, and, as of 2011, the SACLA at the RIKEN Harima Institute in Japan, the PAL-XFEL Laboratory XI Free Electron Laser in Korea. Topic: <inaudible> Self-seeding. One problem with SASE fells is the lack of temporal coherence due to a noisy startup process. To avoid this, one can seed and fell with a laser tuned to the resonance of the fell. Such a temporally coherent seed can be produced by more conventional means, such as by high harmonic generation HHG using an optical laser pulse. This results in coherent amplification of the input signal, in effect, the output laser quality is characterized by the seed. While HHG seeds are available at wavelengths down to the extreme ultraviolet, seeding is not feasible at X-ray wavelengths due to the lack of conventional X-ray lasers. In late 2010, in Italy, the seeded fell source Fermi at Elettra started commissioning, at the Synchrotron Trieste Laboratory. Fermi at Elettra is a single-pass fell user facility covering the wavelength range from 100 nm 12 electron volts to 10 nm 124 electron volts, located next to the third-generation synchrotron radiation facility Elettra in Trieste, Italy. The advent of femtosecond lasers has revolutionized many areas of science from solid-state physics to biology. In 2012, scientists working on the LCLS overcame the seeding limitation for X-ray wavelengths by self-seeding the laser with its own beam after being filtered through a diamond monochromator. The resulting intensity and monochromaticity of the beam were unprecedented and allowed new experiments to be conducted involving manipulating atoms and imaging molecules. Other labs around the world are incorporating the technique into their equipment. Topic: Research. Topic: Biomedical. Topic: Basic research. Researchers have explored free electron lasers as an alternative to synchrotron light sources that have been the workhorses of protein crystallography and cell biology. Exceptionally bright and fast X rays can image proteins using X ray crystallography. This technique allows first time imaging of proteins that do not stack in a way that allows imaging by conventional techniques, 25% of the total number of proteins. Resolutions of 0.8 nm have been achieved with pulse durations of 30 femtoseconds. To get a clear view, a resolution of 0.1 to 0.3 nm is required. The short pulse durations allow images of X-ray diffraction patterns to be recorded before the molecules are destroyed. The bright, fast X-rays were produced at the Linach Coherent Light Source at SLAC. As of 2014 LCLS was the world's most powerful X-ray fell. Surgery. Research by Glenn Edwards and colleagues at Vanderbilt University's Fell Center in 1994 found that soft tissues including skin, cornea, and brain tissue could be cut, or ablated, using infrared Fell wavelengths around 6.45 micrometers with minimal collateral damage to adjacent tissue. This led to surgeries on humans, the first ever using a free electron laser. Starting in 1999, Copeland and Conrad performed three surgeries in which they resected meningioma brain tumors. 
Beginning in 2000, Jews and Morn performed five surgeries that cut a window in the sheath of the optic nerve, to test the efficacy for optic nerve sheath fenestration. These eight surgeries produced results consistent with the standard of care and with the added benefit of minimal collateral damage. A review of FELS for medical uses is given in the first edition of tunable laser applications. Topic. Fat removal Several small, clinical lasers tunable in the 6 to 7 micrometers range with pulse structure and energy to give minimal collateral damage in soft tissue were created. At Vanderbilt, there exists a Raman shifted system pumped by an alexandrite laser. Rox Anderson proposed the medical application of the free electron laser in melting fats without harming the overlying skin. At infrared wavelengths, water in tissue was heated by the laser, but at wavelengths corresponding to 915, 1210 and 1720 nanometers, subsurface lipids were differentially heated more strongly than water. The possible applications of this selective photothermolysis heating tissues using light include the selective destruction of sebum lipids to treat acne, as well as targeting other lipids associated with cellulite and body fat as well as fatty plaques that form in arteries which can help treat atherosclerosis and heart disease. <laughs> Military FEL technology is being evaluated by the U.S. Navy as a candidate for an anti-aircraft and anti-missile directed energy weapon. The Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facilities FEL has demonstrated over 14 kW power output. Compact multi-megawatt class FEL weapons are undergoing research. On June 9, 2009 the Office of Naval Research announced it had awarded Raytheon a contract to develop a 100 kW experimental FEL. On March 18, 2010 Boeing Directed Energy Systems announced the completion of an initial design for U.S. naval use. A prototype FEL system was demonstrated, with a full power prototype scheduled by 2018. See also Bremstrelung Cyclotron radiation Electron wake European X-ray free electron laser Gyrotron International Linear Collider Synchrotron radiation <laughs>